A Toyak minute salamander is a species of salamander endemic to Mexico where it is only known from its type locality in the Sierra Madre del Sur. Its natural habitat is riparian vegetation along hillsides, presumably in forest. Much of the potential habitat is already converted into coffee plantations. It is threatened by habitat loss caused by expanding agriculture and human settlements. The white-eyed river marten may have been overlooked prior to its discovery because it tended to feed at dawn or dusk rather than during the day. The marten's apparent demise may have been hastened by trapping, loss of habitat and the construction of dams. The winter swallow roosts at the only known location of this marten have greatly reduced in numbers, and birds using river habitats for breeding have declined throughout the region. The white-eyed river marten is one of only two birds endemic to Thailand, and the country's government has noted this through the issues of a stamp and a high-value commemorative coin. The Saudi gazelle is an extinct species of gazelle once found in the Arabian Peninsula. Its extinction was due to hunting by humans in its native lands. The Saudi gazelle was formerly seen as a subspecies of the Dorcas gazelle, which is why its decline and extinction received so little attention from conservationists. Recent genetic studies support its position as a separate species. Apart from genetic differences, the Saudi gazelle also had shorter legs than the Dorcas gazelle and was lighter in color. The species was always rare and declining due to excessive hunting. It has not been seen for a few decades, and was declared to be extinct in the wild in 1980. Cyprinus yelongensis is an extinct species of ray-finned fish in the family Cyprinidae. It was found only in Yilong Lake in China. It was last seen before 1981, when the lake was drained for 20 days, presumably causing the species extermination. First reported to science in 1976, the golden koki is ovoviviparous, the only live-bearing species known from the family Eleutherodactylidae. The species is restricted to a few genera of water containing bromeliads in certain moist tropical, subtropical forests and rocky areas. It have only been found in areas of dense bromeliad growth in the Sierra de Calle of Puerto Rico between 647 and 785 meters above sea level. The species was last observed in 1981, and surveys of suitable habitat have not found individuals since then. Researchers have suggested the fungal disease Chytridiomycosis, in combination with climate change, as a likely cause of the species' decline. However, since no direct link has been found, and not all species are affected by the fungus, the causes for the decline are still not clear. Habitat loss to homes and agriculture is the major ongoing threat. The areas where the species was discovered have been deforested. These factors, in combination with the species' low reproductive rate, limited dispersal ability, narrow geographic range, and obligate bromeliad dwelling existence, may be responsible for the species' precarious existence, if not its outright extinction. The chili Darwin's frog is diurnal and feeds on small insects and other invertebrates. The female lays a small clutch of eggs on moist ground. About a week later the embryos are beginning to move within the eggs and the male picks them up and stores them in his vocal sac. He keeps them there until they have developed a functioning gut and then transports them to a suitable water body and releases them. 
the tadpoles grow further in the water and undergo metamorphosis there. This development is in contrast to that of the Darwin's frog tadpoles which complete their development in their parents' vocal sac. The chili Darwin's frog is currently listed as critically endangered, but as there have been no confirmed sightings since around 1981, it may already be extinct. The Mariana mallard inhabited wetlands, mostly inland but occasionally also in coastal areas. Apart from possible inter-island movement, the birds were not migratory. Feeding and reproduction are not well documented, but cannot expect it to differ significantly from its immediate relatives. The birds declined due to draining of wetlands for agriculture and construction. Hunting pressure was probably heavy, despite a ban on gun ownership under Japanese control, as the birds were unwary to traps, and at any rate the gun ban was lifted after World War II. The Mariana mallard was listed as federally endangered on June 1977. In 1979, two males and a female were found on Saipan and caught. One male was later released, the last wild bird ever to be encountered. The pair was brought to Hawaii, and later to SeaWorld San Diego, where it was attempted to have them reproduce in captivity. However, this was unsuccessful and the species became extinct with the death of the last individual in 1981. The blue walleye was a unique color morph of walleye which was endemic to the Great Lakes of North America. Morphometric studies led biologists to classify the blue walleye as a separate species in 1926, although it was later downgraded to a subspecies. Listed as an endangered species by the United States in 1967, it was declared extinct in 1983. The Aldabra brush warbler was a shy and retiring bird, difficult to observe in the dense undergrowth in which it lived. It was most readily located by its chirruping call. In 1983, only one male was observed and the Aldabra brush warbler was considered as the rarest and most restricted bird in the world. It was confined to a 10 hectares large coastal strip on the Aldabran island of Malabar. Following intensive surveys, the extinction of this bird was confirmed in 1986. The Guam flycatcher was a small bird measuring 13 centimeters long with different coloration for the males and females. It had a wide bill with long, whiskers, which helped it locate its food. The bird was secretive and occurred mainly in limestone and ravine forests. Although common on Guam as recently as the early 1970s, the flycatcher's population went into a rapid decline due to predation by the brown tree snake which was accidentally introduced to the island in the 1940s. The last sighting of the flycatcher occurred in the Santa Rosa area in 1983. Given the small size of the island, the complete absence of recent sightings, and the universal presence of the brown tree snake in the bird's former habitat, the Guam flycatcher is considered extinct. ALA Otra Grebe declined in the course of the 20th century, mainly because of habitat destruction, entanglement with monofilament gillnets and predation by the introduced blotched snakehead. Also, the few remaining birds increasingly hybridized with little grebes, 
As the species differed in several key aspects, the hybrid birds may have suffered from decreased fitness, to the detriment of the gene pool. Leon Benin, the director of the conservation organization BirdLife International has stated that, no hope remains for this species, and blames the unforeseen consequences of human action. The Eastern Canary Islands Chiffchaff is an extinct subspecies of the Canary Islands Chiffchaff endemic to the island of Lanzarote. Apparently this subspecies was already very rare at the moment of its description. A number of specimens were collected at the beginning of the 20th century in the valleys of Haria. There it could be observed in broom thickets in the high and fresh zones. Since then there are only some doubtful records. The cause of extinction is unknown. Perhaps its final disappearance is related to the destruction and or transformation of the vegetation in the high zones of the Macizo de Femera. Smith Island cottontail was found in brush and grassy areas behind dunes, in marsh borders, in thickets of myrtle and poison ivy, and occasionally in shrubby pine or mixed deciduous and pine forests. Its home range was affected by the type of cover available, and the abundance of food. The rabbits were generally nocturnal, showing the most activity at dawn and dusk. Surveys of the species population on Smith and Fisherman Islands were done in 1987 and around 1991, and no evidence of the subspecies was found. This indicates that the Smith's Island cottontail is likely extinct. Due to the rarity of the Bachmann's warble, little is known of its behavior. This species is threatened due to habitat destruction. It is thought to have nested in cane breaks, the loss of which posed a threat, as did loss of wintering habitat in the Caribbean and plume hunting. Small-scale logging in the 1800s may actually have increased Bachmann warbler's breeding habitat. Clear-cutting of its habitat and the draining of swamps via water channels are the two main causes of habitat destruction. While it is unknown whether habitat change in its wintering grounds of Cuba affected the species, it is believed that a winter hurricane in the 1930s could have been a crippling blow, making them too rare to find each other and mate. The copri graze on grasses, including bamboo and coom. They also spend a lot of time around salt licks and water holes. They are extinct in the wild but there are estimated to be fewer than 250 copri left in captivity in the world. There is some speculation on whether or not they are already extinct. These low numbers are attributed to uncontrolled hunting by locals and soldiers for meat, horns and skulls for use in traditional Chinese medicine, in conjunction with diseases introduced from cattle and loss of habitat due to agriculture and logging activity. The golden toad is an extinct species of true toad that was once abundant in a small, high-altitude region of about 4 square kilometers. It was endemic to elfin cloud forest. It is commonly considered the poster child for the amphibian decline crisis. A majority of species, including the golden toad, have declined in numbers even in seemingly undisturbed environments. Since records of golden toads were consistently collected, their rapid disappearance was well documented, yet the causes remained poorly understood. After 1989, there have been no verified documented sightings. 
The disappearance was originally attributed to a severe neotropical drought in 1988, but other factors have since been treated as more likely causes. The IUCN has given numerous possible reasons for the species' extinction, including its restricted range, global warming, chytridiomycosis and airborne pollution. The shift of climate during El Niño is caused by the increased atmospheric pressure in the Atlantic and decreased in the Pacific. The wind reduced the amount of rains on the Pacific-facing slopes, and the temperature during the dry season was dramatically higher than usual. At that time, researchers were not certain if the toads were waiting for wetter mating conditions to return or if they had simply died off. The Atitlan grebe is an extinct water bird, a relative of the pied-billed grebe. It was endemic at the Lago de Atitlan in Guatemala at an altitude of 1,700 meters. American ecologist Anne La Bastille observed the decline of this species over a period of 25 years. It was declared extinct by 1990. The decline of the Atitlan grebe began in 1958 and again in 1960 after smallmouth bass and largemouth bass were introduced into Lake Atitlan. These invasive species reduced the crabs and fish which the grebes depended on for food and the fish even killed the grebe chicks. The population of the Atitlan grebe declined from 200 individuals in 1960 to 80 in 1965. The last two birds were seen in 1989, and after they disappeared the Atitlan grebe was declared officially extinct. Garrido's hutia is a possibly extinct species that is found in the Isle of Youth near Cuba. A single animal was collected around 1970. In 1989, two additional animals were captured alive in Keys. Human activity in the animal's range is increasing. Hutia are hunted by fishermen. The Malabar civet is considered nocturnal and so elusive that little is known about its biology and ecology apart from habitat use. Until a few decades ago, local merchants in Kerala reared Malabar civets to obtain civetone, an extract from the scent gland, which was used in medicine, and as an aromatic. It was seriously threatened by habitat destruction and fragmentation. Until the 1980s, it was confined to remnant forests and disturbed thickets in cashew and rubber plantations in northern Kerala, where the hunting pressure was another major threat. <laughs> 